I, I think within the confines of a system that still tells us that buyers are the powers that be and sellers are are the ones that are chosen, right, and selected. There's all the languaging that we're living in in the in the in the marketplace now that describes that sort of hierarchical framework. But more importantly, to your point, is the lack of confidence is what breeds the resistance to having sales conversations. And welcome to a new episode of Digital Coffee Marketing Brew, and I'm your host, Brett Dicer. And this week, we're going to be talking about, well, a little bit more about positivity, a little bit more about content. You know, the content thing you got to know how to do in 2024. It's a little, it, it's really important nowadays because everybody talks about it. That and AI. Apparently, AI is just the, it's the new it storytelling thing. But anyways, I have Teresa Rose with me, and she is, well... She's very enthusiastic and she has her role as a brand and business crystallizer. She gives exciting opportunities to authenticity and enthusiastically implementing the crystallization process so that her clients can actually do what they do best with their brands and everything. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Brett. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And the first question I ask all my guests is, are you a coffee or tea drinker? I'm a tea drinker. I'm a tea drinker. I've I have been a coffee drinker uh, many times uh, for many years, and I found that uh, that tea just sits with my nervous system a little bit better. Mm, do you have like specific teas, like green teas? Jasmine, I do Pearl like tea, Egyptian like... Egyptian licorice is my current favorite. You know, it depends on the time of the year. Right now, too, it's you want to keep your immune system up, as you know. Uh, so I like doing ginger turmeric tea. Got you. So you I know. gave it. Yeah, I mean, it's important right now since yeah. winter is always the time where you get sick. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I really t- I can feel myself around this time of the year. I'm like, OK, come on now. Be proactive. Be proactive. I'm oh, taking care of myself. It's true. All right. So I gave a brief, brief summary of your expertise. Can you give a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I really do three things. I'm a brand and business crystallizer. I'm a a strategic co-creator and I'm a certified speaking professional. So uh, the certified speaking professional part is that I've been uh, in uh, the professional speaking realm for 15 years. Uh, Love doing keynotes and and MC work and improv and stand up comedy and all sorts of things. I love being on stage. The stage is my natural habitat, frankly. Uh, But then really where I have been focusing my efforts for the last several years is as a brand and business crystallizer and a strategic co-creator. What that means is that I help other people get clarity on a cocktail napkin. Uh, I find that in the course of my experience over the last 15 years being in thought leadership, knowing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of speakers, authors, coaches, consultants, advisors, trainers, and working with agencies and working with associations, that the single biggest pain point that they all have is lack of clarity. They cannot see themselves as different than everyone else. They cannot clearly and succinctly articulate it, and they certainly can't draw it on a cocktail napkin. So that's where I started to really focus my efforts was helping other people get that level of clarity so that they can show up in all the other ways that they need to from a marketing standpoint, right? I see the world in in a trajectory of clarify, amplify, monetize. We have to get really, really clear clear about who we are and what we do and what makes us different so much that we could draw it on a cocktail napkin and a child could understand it. Because frankly, that's the kind of world we're living in right now is that people are consuming content in microseconds. They are uh, swiping, swiping as fast as their fingers can swipe. And unless you can captivate someone with a millisecond of visual uh, clarity, then you go and amplify that. Then you amplify that in ads and in uh, speeches and in interviews and in PR and anything else that you might want to do to grow your business. That's how that amplification then really impacts the monetization. Got you. So, I mean, at least my first question, what is the cocktail napkin selling? 
So I love to talk about sales. I really love sales because if we think about it, sales is like this sad, misunderstood, uh, you know, phenom that exists in all of our businesses that m- many of us are afraid of, we're resistant to, we don't embrace, we have, a, we just have a negative, uh, you know, deep negative uh, relationship with sales. And I am here to turn that around with every single cocktail napkin that I can help crystallize brands with. And that is once you, once you really, really can see yourself outside of your own framework and you can draw it, what that does, that cocktail napkin, and when I say cocktail napkin, I'm talking about a contextual model. So for example, many of your listeners are probably familiar with Simon Sinek and his Start With Why uh, movement, uh, talking about how why is in the center of the circle, then it follows by the how, then it follows by the what. Those are three concentric circles that define an entire leadership uh, methodology that he has made, you know, created an empire around. So that's the kind of cocktail napkin clarity that I'm talking about. So when we look at cocktail napkin sales, what I like to uh, imagine is if we can all think about what the dynamics are in a traditional sales conversation. The dynamics in a traditional sales conversation are, I've got a buyer who's higher up, who's got a a lot more uh, influence and authority and power in the dynamics, and they're the ones that are going to dictate the way the conversation goes. And then you have the seller, and the seller is hoping, hoping, hoping that they can get noticed by the buyer, that they can describe their value enough that the buyer will give them the job or give them the contract. And there's a power dynamic of over-under that traditional sales brings with it, which is why everybody's so resistant resistant to it. They're resistant to being in that subservient uh, role of, I hope you choose me, right? So what happens when you have cocktail napkin selling and you can externalize your value onto a cocktail napkin, what you do then is you add a third party into the sales conversation. It's not just the buyer. It's not just the seller. It's the thing. It's the cocktail napkin. It's the conversation piece. So that when I'm having a sales conversation with someone, I'm not the seller that's hoping that the buyer notices me and hoping that the buyer sees my value. I am turning the conversation to the cocktail napkin and I'm saying, this is what I specialize in. And you talk about that third party thing. I call it triangulated sales. When you triangulate the energy between a buyer and a seller and they both then focus on the cocktail napkin, what that does is that changes the energy dynamics so that now we are peers and we're potential partners talking about a thing. And if you don't like my thing, that's okay, but I got a thing and I'm passionate about this thing and this is the hill I'm going to die. On. And so when I do that so confidently and so clearly and so consistently in every single sales conversation that I have everywhere all the time, what happens then is buyers go, ooh, I, I need that. How do I get to work with you on that? And that totally changes everything when it comes to sales. So, I mean, talking a little philosophically about sales, is because that we've seen so many negative ways that people have sold themselves or is it, it's just, is it more of this humble thing that we just don't know how to, I guess you could say, like sell ourselves in more of a, not a dominant way, but more of a confident way of like, this is what we do. Is that more of like the thing that we just don't know how to do the, it confidently for the most part? I think that's largely the, the I, I think within the confines of a system that still tells us that buyers are the powers that be and sellers are, are the ones that are chosen, right, and selected. There's all the languaging that we're living in in the, in the, in the marketplace now that describes that sort of hierarchical framework. But more importantly, to your point, is the lack of confidence is what breeds the resistance to having sales conversations. 
If you can eliminate the problem of lack of confidence, which comes from clarity, once you're clear and you can draw it on a cocktail napkin and say it over and over and over and over and over again, like a child could understand it. When you have that level of confidence, that necessarily changes the way you show up. Because I can, for example, when I'm in a sales conversation with people, I am super relaxed and I am just happy and open and ready to have a connection with them. That's it. It's all I'm there to be, right? And all I am is just fully present with them and I'm listening to them and I'm noticing what's important to them and I'm noticing what, what they're not saying. And all of that information I'm taking in from a fully receptive place, okay? Because I'm not concerned about the sales pitch, I'm just listening and being with that person. And once I can understand them fully and then invariably the law of reciprocity kicks in and they say, well, enough about me. Tell me a little bit about you. Right. So I'm not pushing myself into the conversation from a sales perspective. I'm simply holding space with this person and listening to them. And when they're done telling me whatever they want to tell me, they're going to say enough about me. What about you? And I'm going to say, well, I do cocktail napkin clarity. I help people get clear on clarifying, amplifying, monetize. And I say a little bit about what I do. And I say, and this is how I see the world. And invariably they see the value in that because I'm talking about it and I'm not selling them. They're the ones then who are resonant with what I offer. They're the ones that then go, oh, wow, that's, that sounds really interesting. Tell me a little bit more about that. And I go, well, you know, the other clients that I've worked with, this is how I've done it. Right. And so I'm not in any way turning on the juice of, will you pick me? And I'm just flouncing my feathers as the proud peacock to say, I, I, I'm the best. I'm just simply describing my cocktail napkin. Right. And talking about how other people have done it. Either you want to be able to have that or not. But that level of confidence that I show up in because of simply the fact that I know what my napkin is. Right. I know it. Yeah, so I mean, because I'm dating myself a little bit, but I, I mean, I worked for Circuit City when they were oh. big. It's a little dated. Yeah. They're, they're still around, just online only. But okay, I mean, we always heard that the, that, that the customer's always right. And I feel like that's kind of like infected every sales thing where it's like, well, they're always uh -huh. right. They're always the perfect thing. We have to convince them to do it. We have to convince yeah. them through some hard sales. Mm -hmm. Mostly it was always the hard sale pitch and not the more of value based, I guess, this is my value yep. that I bring. So yep. should, can we like, how do we like turn that around? Because I feel like everybody's in that mindset of, well, it's always the customer's always right, even though the customer may not know anything about what you do or even your industry. Well, what you're talking about is, is post sale customer experience. The customer is always right. I'm talking about before they become a customer and their prospects. So that's my sweet spot of how do we how do we get clear on who we are so that we can market ourselves in a consistent, concise, uh, 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 you know, compelling way so that we can close the deal. Once you've closed the deal, then you get to decide what level of commitment you want to adhere to whatever practices, right? Customer service practices. So, but if you bring it back earlier in the, in the cycle, when we're talking about the sales conversation, I, the customer isn't always right because he's not a customer yet, or she's not a customer yet. I'm simply saying this is, you, you know, we've got, again, we're three, we're three entities in the sales conversation, you, me, the cocktail napkin. And we're going to talk about, are we resonant with that? Are we, and I even use that language, are we resonant with each other on this? Do we find that we are in agreement? Are we in partnership? Um, I'm meeting you where you're at. I am a strategic co-creator. Remember I said I'm a brand and business crystallizer, strategic co-creator, and certified speaking professional. The strategic co-creator part is really essential. Yes, I have an ability to crystallize people's brands down to a picture, and that's really fancy and wonderful and really, really important from a marketing standpoint, but the more important role that I serve is as a strategic co-creator. And that's meeting somebody where they're at. It's actually saying we're going to do this together and we're not going to have any weird dynamics of a power over or, or uh, this is transactional. We are meeting in a circle together. And, and I start that at the sales conversation. So they really understand how I work. 
Got you. So what is some of the smartest and fastest way to monetize someone's gifts and talents? Because I feel like everybody somewhat knows their gifts and talents. They just don't know how to, I guess, show them off. Well, again, what I would encourage your listeners to do is to look at an inventory of all of the places that they have shined. And I, when I work with people, I create something called a box of brilliance. And it's an empty drive in the cloud that I say, wherever you have shined, wherever your gifts and talents have, have showed up on where people listen to you, like podcast interviews, where people read you, like articles and uh, social posts and books and half-written manuscripts and handwritten notes, <laughs> and where you have uh, watched, where they've watched you, maybe videos that you've done of yourself or what you've done on stage and how they've interacted with you. Where are some conversations that you've had with people that are important, right? Uh, some some networking events that you've done and some different recordings that you've done, even speeches that you've made. Put all of that in that box of brilliance and start to look at yourself and really see what are those pieces that I continually talk about over and over and over and over again. If I were to chip away everything that isn't the essence of me, what would I find? And get really, really clear about that because once you have then the foundation, the framework of of what makes you you, what makes you different than everybody else, then you can amplify that strategically. Everywhere everybody finds you, they're going to hear the same things, right? This the, the website says the same thing as the lead generations, which says the same thing as the LinkedIn, which says the same thing as what your sales materials are. Everything, everything, everything is all the same stuff. That's when it come, becomes easy to monetize because then you only have... <laughs> one funnel that you need to bring people in, right? One place that you bring them in and they come in that one door and then you're going to strategically bring them up a walk, run, soar model. Those There's like lots and lots of people want to work with me at this level. And then those who want to continue, they're going to they're gonna run with me at this next level. And then a few of them are going to soar with me on this level. Having a graduated value ladder of our offers, make it easy for the people to say yes who fall in love with you and they'll they'll fall in love with you when they understand you and they understand that you, what you do f solves my problem and they can see it as a picture got you so let's say like someone's new to this and they don't really have like any type of like content like what's the good way of like building it because if you don't really know or you can't find <laughs> whatever you've done, I know everybody's online, but maybe maybe you just didn't do that much and you were focused on school or whatever. How can they build that content to showcase like their gifts and talents? That's a great question. Um, what I would recommend is that they really start to do some deep thinking and introspection first and foremost of what what do they want to be known for? What, 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 what do they want to, what problems do they want to solve? Um, what, what is themes that continue to show up in their lives that they lean into that if you were caught, if you were stuck in an elevator with someone for seven hours, what would you be talking about that really matters? Right. And get really, really clear thematically. So once you get clear thematically about kind of major themes in your life, maybe even take a stab at drawing it in a, in a model of some kind, creating a, a three dimensional picture of it. Then you start going, OK, the four ways people take in my brilliance are they read me, they listen to me, they watch me and they interact with me. That's the only way any of us get taken in those four ways. OK, so then we go. All right. Read. What kind of content do I want to create about these major topics? What 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 would stir my soul? Right. What would stir my soul to be able to write about that? And you just start building the library from your heart. You start with the heart. What really matters to you. And that's why the work that I do is so I call strategically sacred, because part of my process is that I actually see these people. I see them in their content. I see where they shine. I see when they have, when they're in a podcast interview, what parts that le they light up in. You know, I can actually feel it. And so what I encourage them to do is do some deep thinking about what do you, re what really matters in your life? You know, the words 
the words, not some catchphrases or some tagline or anything like that. Like genuinely, what are the buckets that, that matter to you? Right? That's where I would encourage them to go. Start at the beginning and then build the content marketing strategy on top of the fundamental framework that is you. Got you. And then should they pick like a specific form of content? Because I mean, you could try to do it all. You could try to write, you could try to do Ugh. this, you could try that. But I mean, there needs to be like a certain, like, I guess, pick a lane, I guess the best way of saying it, because I mean, if people come to me and ask me about a podcast or how to start a podcast, I'll ask them a series of questions. And then I might say, this might not actually be for you. You might just want to be a guest on a podcast instead of yeah. actually doing it's a podcast. Exactly, which I found to be tremendously effective. So again, what I encourage my clients to do is to consider where they can uh, try to find one channel in the read, listen, watch and interact buckets. So what what one place do you want it when people are readers? Do you want to write a blog? Are you going to write a book? Are you going to be writing social posts every single day that are relevant to your work? What part of writing stirs you enough to be able to do it regularly, consistently? And I encourage even those who don't write, use the text to, to speech transcription processes, apps that can help you with that. But you know, there are a segment of people that want to take you in that are going to want to read you. So figure out one channel that stirs your soul that you could do and rally around to do that. And then listen, I encourage you like with podcasting, if you're not going to hold a po host a podcast, be a podcast guest so that you can get your message out there for those that want to hear your voice. And then watch where are you doing some videos that they can see you on? If you do you have a TikTok uh, channel? Do you have, you know, are you putting LinkedIn uh, videos on, on your blogs? What are you doing to show yourself for people that are watching you? And then finally, interact. Where are you actually taking this now face to face, face to face? Because face to face is the most potent form of communication connection that we can have. So where are you interacting with them? Are you getting on stages? Are you going to networking events? Are you going to retreats? Are you co-working in space? Where are you going that you can share that content with people? And content doesn't just have to be 157 posts that you tag with a bunch of hashtags. Your energy that you show up in, in, a, in a personal way, in an interactive way, is far more potent than 100 pieces of meaningless content you put on with stupid hashtags. Mm. So is it more like building like almost your own storytelling I guess is the best way of saying it to like build your own story of like where you came from to now where you're at and maybe now where you eventually want to be. But even tighter, self. even okay. tighter, even tighter than that. But yes, exactly. That's the, the, that's what we're getting at is what is that cocktail napkin story? Cause I can tell with my three little words and my three little descriptions of, of clarify, amplify, monetize where it starts in the heart and then it radiates outward. And then there's the money signs out by monetize. I can tell an entire story around those three words. So yes, you want to get to that level of how do I tell, what did I do? How did I get here? How, do my, how am I solving the problems? And how can I help you? All that gets wrapped up in the right smart picture that describes you. So it's almost like the Joseph Campbell, like hero's journey, but just a tighter version of it. Exactly. You're not, you have no re conclusion yet because you're still writing your own conclusion, basically. Exactly. 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 Right until that person comes into the conversation, then we're writing the conclusion. Are we working this together? Got you. And then what's this, let's say someone is like picked a lane for content and it was like, maybe this isn't the best one for me. Is yeah. it okay to like pivot away from that? Because I mean, we're all human and we all learn from our failures or most of us learn from our failures. So is it, oh, yeah. is it still okay to like do that? Cause some people may think that like, Nope, I got to stick with it no matter how bad I am. Oh. I think that's the kiss of death. I, I think once you start to see that you need to make a decision, you need to make an adjustment that you are not crystal clear, that you don't really have that level of clarity. Because when you are this clear about who you are and, and how you shine in the world, it, nothing is a burden. Content, content development is not a burden. Sales conversations are not a burden. We show up genuinely and authentically and enthusiastically and consistently when we know who we are and we know the lane we're in because it's our own lane. There's only one.
There's only one. It's only ours. When we know that to such level, to such a level, that's when everything opens up. So if you're feeling, if your listeners are like, oh man, I can't, I'm, it's not working. What I would encourage you to do is have a fresh look at it. Look at everything that you've done over the last year. Take 2023's content and really go through, okay, what was my top channel of content? Maybe it was Instagram. So you go and you look at Instagram and you check out all of the places that had the highest level of engagement and you you notice it, you reverse engineer it. What was it about that? What was I talking about? What was my heart? Where was my heart in this in this post and really start to reverse engineer where are you where are you brilliant where do you shine what makes you you and get clear on those kinds of things so that you can then go okay I'm not going to pivot I'm going to refine I'm going to enhance I'm going to dial it in don't I hate that language that we've often put on these kinds of things for people unnecessarily that makes them feel like a failure when it hasn't worked every single person that I work with had uh, every one of them without exception comes to me with a certain level of sheepishness to shame about what they've not been able to do. And what I tell them is this is sort of the way we're built. We're, we're, We're wired to only be fully seen by another person. You will never, ever, ever find a degree of success in your life, if you try to do it alone, it is just not going to happen. Okay. We are built as collaborative beings. So that nature of kind of, oh, I need to pivot or I need to reinvent. No, you don't. You're growing. You're growing and, and bring in others that can help see you and help you look at like, why did they light up? Why do they, which post do they remember? What do they think about you? And if they could describe you on a cocktail napkin, what would it look like? Let other people see you, right? See who you are beyond what you're presenting out to the world so that you can get some of that clarity and shine it more, more directly as you're creating your content. So it is almost like looking at the Joseph Campbell, because the hero's journey is all about like learning from your mistakes, basically, because I mean, throughout the journey, you're like, I mean, let's take star Wars because it was, it's a perfect example of just basically kind of that dichotomy where it's just like you, you, you're a beginner, you failed and then you really fail. And then you just get better from that because you learn that maybe I shouldn't have done that. Let's see if I can like figure this part out type of a thing. So is it more of that like type of communication that we should be fostering more than just pivoting and refining yes. or whatever? Yes. Yes. You know, as a, I, I had done a lot of improv when I was, uh, you know, primarily working as a keynote speaker and I loved it so much. And yes, and is the, the fundamentals of, of improvisation. Yes, we're going to say yes to this and we're going to add on to it. So look at your content and go, yes, it's worked me. It's brought me where I'm at right now, wherever that is. And where do I want to now refine? Where do I want my heart to drive? And then and more importantly, can I draw something? Really encouraging your, your listeners, get visual. Because when we can start to use visuals, we are going to be so much more impactful to our audience when we can give them that. They, the brain processes it so much faster than text. I did a TEDx talk recently uh, for TEDx Temecula called uh, Doodle Your Dreams, How a Cocktail Napkin Will Save the World. And I talk about the picture superiority effect, how our brains process visuals 60,000 times faster than text. So thinking about what is my foundational content uh, platform and how can I create a visual around that, you will go to the stratosphere because you're going to utilize a different part of our brain, one that helps us remember more, one that helps us take action more. We're really utilizing emotional uh, persuasion by utilizing these visual frameworks to help uh, create a foundation for our content. And then, I mean, moving on, it's like, because you talk about cocktail napkin, because it, it almost is like doing a lot of PR, because PR is like, especially for press releases, everything important on the top and all the filler goes down. So if people are really interested, they'll read the filler. If they aren't exactly. really interested, well, they at least know what you're about. 
Exactly. Exactly. I mean, wouldn't you rather do that in three words than 3,000? Right. So it's like it's it's taking again, taking the PR, uh, you know, press release and saying, OK, what's the essence of that? Let's bring it to the essence. I'm just a freak about models. I mean, I even did one for my word of the year. Right. So I was like, OK, what's my word of the year that I really want to get my myself around? And it is honor. I'm going to use I'm, I'm energizing the word honor. And I created a three dimensional uh, framework around it that had on the triangle, it had self and it had boundaries and it had containers. And I wanted to have with the word honor in the middle of it. And I was like, I really want to have a visual that will remind me of what I have committed to, what I am aligned around. We're so scattered and so ungrounded and so uh, distracted by all of the shiny objects that are spinning in front of us that we need a visual to, to really anchor us so that we can keep going and keep kind of resonant with what we want to energize, right? And not let it just fritter away. Yeah, specifically right now, because CES is going on. So there's a lot of shiny new objects flooding the market. Exactly. And uh, you know what? I'm kind of like the anti-AI person because I really believe that I, 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 part of what makes m m crystallization, the work that I do, so uh, meaningful is that you are not forgetting the human element, that the person, there's a person seeing you seeing your vulnerabilities, seeing your tenderness, seeing your hesitation, seeing your strength, seeing your courage, because our voices and our eyes and our hearts all send that out. And AI can, con can, can read your content and spit it out at you. And I'm sure there's lots of ways we're going to see that happen, where it's going to absorb all of the words that we're using. But I am going to go down on the hill that says humans will never be replaced. That I that there is a value to seeing another person's soul and spirit and heart and desire to make a difference in the world. I, I agree with you. I'm a little bit more in the middle where I'll use it to offset a lot of tasks that I may not want to do. But yes, I do agree to that you shouldn't use just AI to augment your own personality. You, you should no. have it to maybe enhance or maybe help your writing or maybe yeah. help with ideation because it will help you with that. But yeah, it's absolutely. Absolutely. I'm talking about like, I mean, I use AI too. In fact, I call my Fathom AI Faye uh, and she joins, Faye always joins all my co conference calls and, and does a wonderful job of summarizing what they, what they do. What I'm really talking more about is, you know, don't let it replace you. Don't let it replace your voice. Don't let it replace your spirit, your heart. Because to me, that is where the fire is. That is where the activation agent is. You can have all the fancy words you want, but until you have that coming from inherently from within and the picture, the cocktail napkin clarity can be that prism through which that light shines through, that's where the real magic will start to happen. And so what's your, some people are on the fence about this, like what's going to be your best way of like convincing people to use this? Because I'm pretty sure people are hearing that and be like, yeah, I like this, but where do I start? And is this really for me? Yeah. Well, I encourage two things. First, check out that TEDx talk uh, about it on TEDx Temecula and also go to TeresaRose.com slash clear. And if you're wondering how to spell my name, it looks like there's a rose.com. So I got an H in my name, TeresaRose.com slash clear, and they will get access to my, uh, my 10 part uh, video course on the crystallization process and they can start doing it for themselves. All right. Any final thoughts? Uh, I just want to encourage everybody, you know, sh this is an important time in our lives and we want to be able to make every day count, make every post count. And when you have that level of cocktail napkin clarity, you're going to be sending that powerful energy out into the world and that's going to get noticed and magnetized and acted upon. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Teresa, for joining Digital Coffee Marketing Brew and sharing your knowledge just on your process and the crystallization process as well. Thank you for having me. And thank you for listening. As always, please subscribe to this podcast and all your favorite podcasting apps with a five-star review. And 
Join us next week as we talk to another great thought leader in the PR and marketing industry. All right, guys, stay safe. Keep to understanding who you are, your process, and use the cocktail process. It might actually really help you out. And see you next week. Later.